Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Fernando Marino. I'm from CPQD, uh, and I'm here to talk about uh, the uh, decentralized identity framework for Internet of Things. Actually, it's a lab. Uh, it was a research that was developed on CPQD. CPQD is a research. Uh, is a, it is a research center in Brazil. Okay, we are where we are researching. Uh, blockchain applications and uh, the application of self sovereign identity uh, for people and things as well. Well, uh, a little bit about the Internet of Things that you know, Internet of Things is a network of things, a network that connects things, and those things should be identifiable. Uh, identity of things is what differentiates each of uh, IoT devices within the OC systems. It is about how to identify a specific device in an ecosystem. Okay, so uh, here is an example of uh, IoT architecture using self uh, decentralized identity. Uh, this was uh, a, concept, a, 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 a common concept of architecture. You know, you have here the applications, the business applications layer, then we have the cloud servers and the wireless network the wireless sensor network, okay? Uh, here in the uh, in the middle of that, we have the IoT middlewares, where those IoTs usually connect themselves and send their dat data for those middlewares. Okay, uh, we have a few challenges, you know, in, in, in the IoT field. Uh, devices, devices usually they are limited in terms of computer power. Uh, devices can be compromised and forced to propagate invalid information. So you are not sure about what we are receiving from those devices. And inter 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 interoperability among different networks and the guarantee of authenticity and integration uh, and the integrity of data. Uh, how to ensure the integrity and authenticity in an IoT network using self sovereign identity or uh, decentralized identity? Portuguese is. Identidade descentralizada, because of that is IDD. Uh, here is a concept uh, we developed on CPQD. Uh, this frameworks basically we have a security layer, we have a, a, a middleware that's middleware called Dojo. It's an IoT middleware. It's an uh, open source project that CPQD developed a few years ago. So Dojo is uh, open. We have a community and a lot of industry using Dojo in Brazil for Internet of Things, blockchain layer using Hyperledger Indy, and we have a lot of Akapai. <laughs> uh, I mean, we are using Akapai uh, to run the agents of issuers and verifiers, but we, to run this lab, we also use Akapai embedded in, in the devices. Okay, so we got Raspberries devices, and we put Akapai running in these devices here. And we have a lot of sensors connected on those devices, collecting data, and then transmit those data as a Kapai, uh, as Raspberry working as a kind of hub. Here you have uh, a few examples, for example, one Akapai, one sorry, one Raspberry working as a hub before many sensors. Uh, we have uh, one sensor connecting one Akapai, uh, uh, using through the the Raspberry, and we have uh, uh, an IoT using uh, an Akapai directly. Okay, the idea here, how it's working? Ah, uh, we have to change the Akapai to accept the MQTT protocol. Uh, everybody here knows the MQTT protocol IoT. Okay, so that was uh, uh, the the new implementation here. It was to uh, adapt the uh, Ares Cloud Edge Python to transmit data using MKTT. So how it is working? Well, the sensors collect the data. We, uh, we wrap this data using GDCOM protocol, using connections. And then it is sent by using the MKTT protocol for the agent. When it comes to Dojo, Dojo can check the GID informations and uh, the signature of those data that was sent using the GDCOM protocol, okay? So we have a kind of trust layer here 
uh, guaranteeing that uh, to guarantee to the middleware that this data that they are processing now came from this specific uh, sensor, this specific IoT. Okay, uh, we can use India as well to exchange credentials. One idea that I have here was to share a particular IoT. I mean, uh, a lot of middlers here uh, using the same IoT to collect the data. But the IoT must, must know if uh, this middler is allowed or not to collect their data. So the owner of the IoT device issues a credentials for the middler. The middler shows these credentials for the device. The device check it, verify it on the ledger, and said, OK, you can receive my data now and start to share this data with this another IoT. That is particularly interesting in the field of 5G, right? Because uh, at least in the develop and in development countries like Brazil, the telcos they must to share their devices 5G or it does not work properly. Uh, the security layer is in, we are using the common security uh, approaches to guarantee the security information. And how uh, uh, I will explain a little bit about more about our architecture now. So as I told you, we use the Azure platform, Ares agent, and IoT device. The roles of each one, well, the Dojo is our IoT meter, as I said. Uh, it established this, the connections and issuing credentials through our our our, 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 our agent, and finally the information is coming from the device and is accessible in the web platform. Okay, our agents is our decentralized agents here. I think we we don't have many doubts about that. And the IoT device is properly the one that gets information and data and transfer those data for the middleware using Dilicon. Our proof of concept goals. What was our goals? Uh, first one, evaluate the framework developed in, in a test environment. It was build a lab. Detect the flaws and possible improvements in the concept and even in the application. And define a feature work for this research. Present and present the conclusions. OK, uh, that's the sequence that we have. So we have the agent. We have uh, the IoT agent, I mean the IoT embedded agent, the Dojo agent, a cloud agent that's integrating with your pl our, our platform, and the platform as itself. Uh, ooh, the IoT agent create a request of connection. The Dojo agent accept this connection response and offer a credentials for this device. Since it's offered, the device accept it or not, usually it's accept our, uh, our credentials, and send a message. You use the send, missions, the, the send message protocol. Everybody here knows the send, missions, send message API in Ares API, where you can send a string for another agent, a free string. You use it to transfer data. So it was a real lab, okay? Uh, in production, we have to uh, develop an appropriate channel to send those data, but here only to try. You use the send message API REST. Uh, we send message, the agent handle the message, and why <laughs> why does your agent handle the message? Because we developed a webhook here, and we are uh, checking the strings, detecting the, the strings, the, the kind of these messages. I mean, it's a setup message. It's a data transfer message. So we developed a, a protocol to detect which kind of message we are receiving from our LT device. So we handle the message, and then we send the message to the Joe. Uh, here is Dojo. Uh, Dojo, uh, we use the, container the containerized version of Dojo platform. It's open, so everyone here can try Dojo. Uh, we use a local Indian network uh, using the VON network to test the solution. Uh, the Ares Cloud Agent Python that we use is the version 1.0, 1.7.0. We use a, a Raspberry 4 Model B a uh, Raspberry Pi uh, OS to desktop operation systems, Arduino, and a sensor to collect the weather. 
informations. Okay, uh, that is, is our test bed here. So we have our Raspberries and the sensors connected with the Raspberry. This Raspberry has uh, I, uh, an Akapai agent embedded on it. The difference is here. In the settings of Akapai, we we have to set the M the M key, uh, MQTT broker configurations. Okay, so we have a broker um, on MQTT, and we uh, we change the Akapai to receive these informations and to use MQTT as a, its main protocol. Okay, uh, since that we have a script to collect data. I mean, the, to collect the data sent from the IoT devices. And we have the, uh, the Dojo platform receiving, receiving the data from the devices, like pressure or temperature. OK, now we have a, a, a video to demonstrate it's working. It's not working. Even with video, demonstration is not easy. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm so sorry, guys, but I, th I think it's the video. It's not my computer because I don't have the HDMI in my my own one, and it's not uh, playing here. And I don't know exactly what is what's happening. Sorry about that. Uh, sad. This is a, this is a, that's a nice video showing the setup of the Ares Cloud Agent Python, the IoT connecting and receiving their, uh, its credentials from Dojo, and then uh, send data to the Dojo and the data showing in our platform web and working. But I think it. Yes, good idea. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, here we go. Uh, we're starting the agents, the sensor agents in the API Python. Okay. Uh, we created the invitation here. As you can see in the terminal, we created the invitation. The invitation was created by the IoT agent and it was sent to the uh, Dojo agent. The, so it's interesting because the IoT must know the endpoint and the uh, address, the person's address of IoT middleware here. Now the connection is OK. It's, it was established. And the IoT got its credential. Uh, in the Dojo, each device works like an, an agent. So you can see here the device that was connected. Here, 
the device that was connected. Now you can check the device, the device and the data coming from this device using MQTT protocol and DDCOM protocol as well. the data coming from the device and being verified and, sh and showed by the Dojo platform. Well, what we learned with that? Our conclusions. First, based on the, this prototype that we developed, it's possible to state IDD can, uh, decentralized identity can be significant to, to in IoT security. DDCon has an interesting key layer that provides messaging integrity to guarantee that the, uh, me, uh, the content that was sent by the device was not changed by itself. The creation of virtual devices or digital twins associated with the digital identities, an MQTT transport plugin for interoperability in IoT networks. Second, finally, we obtained unstable test scenarios with the possibility of extensions for other applications. Future works, that is our vision, right? The, uh, the, the image that I, uh, I shown you show you how uh, it was in terms of a POC. Looking for a uh, feature work, there's a lot of things to do, as you can see. Uh, we have, first of all, we have uh, another protocols that must be integrated with the ARIES, not on MQTT, but LoRaWAN um, and on others. Uh, we have to the perception layer, because we don't have in this POC the perception layer. I mean, we are using the uh, connection layer, the hub layer using Hasberry here, but in terms of security, uh, we have to connect in the perception layer. I mean, even put a DOED, uh, uh, a DID into the sensors that you connect in the hub. Uh, interoperability. Interoperability in among things and among platforms as well. Connect with another platform, uh, another middlers. We are only working nowadays with Dojo middler, but uh, it's necessary to integrate, for example, Bosch. About the, uh, Bosch has its own IoT middler, and it must be integrated here to use this protocol as well. Police management. Uh, term, uh, we are talking about governance, for example, to create a trust layer here. We are not ab uh, only talk about technology, we are talking about uh, how we, we can create a trust, uh, a trustable environmental, uh, a trust environment for our companies and agents. So is that. Uh, that was, uh, we developed and in CPQD using the IoT, our lab that we developed there. And that's the insight, the, 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 the landscape that we have to use Decentralized identity with IoT. Uh, we have time. If uh, anyone has questions, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, no, we didn't run in the uh, uh, Arduino device. We 
just we only use the Raspberry and Eris Cloud Python agent. I mean, I don't think it's possible to run the Akapai in Arduino because uh, it, it, it don't have support for Docker or something like that. And in this research specifically, we are more interested about the protocols. Okay, how to interpret a bit? Because uh, at the first time we have a doubt. Uh, it is possible to use because MQTT it's a very short protocol, uh, and the DDCon uh, as it is nowadays, it's not exactly uh, a teeny protocol. It's a heavy protocol. I mean, so it works. It it works with the the MQTT protocol. I, I got I got myself surprised when I uh, I see that it's working pretty well uh, with MAC with the MQTT protocol, even to do. Uh, proof of credentials, issuing credentials, not only to send uh, a, a message uh, rapid in the DDCOM protocol. That was a surprise for me. And so we are looking for that. But it's, uh, it's clear for us who, who, uh, it's necessary a light version of DDCOM protocol for IoT devices. So we are not looking to run uh, in Arduino or something like that because we are researching the protocols among those devices. Actually, it's yes, sure. Uh, uh, we have a picture here. I hate animations. Here, uh, we have seed label agent. Here, are you seeing? Uh, because it's uh, uh, it's a. Uh, here in, in the Genesis URLI, it has the address of uh, our VON network. So we build a VON network uh, in-house for this lab, and it's connecting the everybody. Uh, everybody here is connected and registered and registered in the in the network. I, I I don't know if the the, the right thing to do. I mean, the device they don't most they don't most to be regi registered in the in the in the ledger, right? Only the issuer actually need it, need is it. But we registered the devices and the verifiers and the issuers in the ledger. So everybody here is registered using a seed and something like that. But it's it's pretty similar to what we you do we when you set up uh Aries Cloud Agent Akapai. Oh, I got it. Yes, uh, the Inge integrations. Uh, it is, you know, we are using the RPC. I, uh, I guess it's not uh, the Inge integration is not happening using MQTT protocol. That's your question. It's not. No, no, no. The Inge integration. It's we, 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 we didn't uh, handle it. So the Inge integration is still using the HTTP protocol, as you can see. We are not using the MQTT to integrate the uh, the to the Inge, but that's a great idea. Yes, yes, that's a can consideration on, on others for this research. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, it's lunch time. Thank you, guys. <laughs>